This video is meant for anyone out there who's been using GarageBand for a very long time and has started to wonder, can I move over to Logic X? Is it gonna be really easy or is it gonna be very difficult? Is there a huge learning curve right at the beginning? You know, that's, that's the big worry for a lot of people when I talk to them about switching over. Uh, is it hard or is it just GarageBand on steroids? That's what I'm gonna show you and talk about today. So from that intro, my regular viewers have probably figured out, yes, I did get Logic X. I've had it for a while, a couple weeks now, um, and I've been using it and loving it. So really quickly here at the top, I will tell you, no, it is not that much more complicated than GarageBand. Yes, you can just get it and pretty much figure it out right away. A few little things are different when you first open a project, but it's really self-explanatory. It looks pretty much the same. So right here, right now, this is what will be the Music Monday song for next week, okay? So you guys are gonna get a little sneak preview. It is thoroughly unfinished. Um, this is a very rough mix that I've been playing with. But from what you should see right here, hey, check it out. It looks just like GarageBand. You have the faders here, you have mute and solo buttons, you have a record button here, which is the record enable button. So it is a little bit different than the way GarageBand does things when it comes to the monitoring of your instruments. I will just briefly explain this. Uh, if you are just trying to sit here and play along to the song without recording, you can leave this R unchecked. However, when it comes time to record, uh, you have to arm the track, pretty easy but you have to disarm the record enable button when you just wanna play along if you're just trying to learn your part, for example. But as you can see, like I said, this looks just like GarageBand, okay? So for a while, I was using it just like this. Um, and you know, for uh, and I still do go back to this view because it is, you know, it's familiar and it's nice. So I'm just gonna show you a few examples of how it's different. Uh, you know, just to sort of tip your toes in the water here. So. Obviously, I have a mixer now, bang, let's look at this thing. So, I mean, this really does um, change things. As soon as you open this up, it's like, whoa, what is this, okay? So here are the plugins, just like we had in GarageBand, instead of being in the lower left-hand window, uh, you know, in that little corner section, they're in the individual channels, which is really nice. Of course, I can bus these things out. I can make subgroups, which is really nice, meaning that if I have multiple tracks that require the same exact effect, I can open that effect just once on a subgroup and then send all those signals through it. So I only have that one reverb running, for example, if like if all the backup vocals need the same reverb, for example, right? Um, okay, so this is obviously a huge difference down here at the bottom. Now, some of the other things that I was really excited to see uh, was in the synthesizer sounds. I will say you get a lot, a lot, a lot of new sounds, which was totally worth it to me. Um, I was, I'm always happy. So I got better sounding strings. There are studio cellos and all these different things that you can see right here. There are also some different horn sections. I haven't downloaded all of them as you can see yet. It is quite large and I still have to free up some hard drive space on my computer for these. Um, but anyway, there are new sounds, which is awesome. But what I want to tell you really is if you are someone like me, I was recording on GarageBand for about 10 plus years. I mean, it, it could easily be 13 or 14 years. The Music Monday process was awesome. I produced 80 full blown songs on GarageBand for Music Monday. And it just sort of got to the point where I was really pushing as a producer and as an engineer to get closer and closer to that mainstream music sound. Uh, and I was starting to feel the limitations of GarageBand, okay? Now, one of those things that I'm gonna talk about really briefly here, because there are third party plugins that you can buy um, I don't have a favorite, so I'm not going to name any. I mean, there there's so many great. I, I think the Fab Filter is probably, well, I just said I'm not going to name anything, but Fab Filter is really good, and you can do these things on Fab Filter. So if you were to buy the Fab Filter EQ, uh, you could do these things, but it comes stock in Logic. So what I'm talking about is mid and side EQing, okay? So as a GarageBand user, you might not know what that term is. Uh, let me just get to my master channel. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing there. Master channel out here. So what I'm talking about specifically here is this EQ. I now have the ability to EQ just the mid section, just the mid channel, or I can get everything that has been panned left and right 
and I can listen to them and EQ them slightly differently, which is absolutely positively one of those elements that makes your mix sound really wide. Have you ever listened to a recording, you know, a professionally done recording and wondered how, how do they get those guitars so far out there and why is the sound so, why are they so separated? It's this technique right here. It's this mid side EQ mixing, uh, also combined with mid and side compression if the track needs it, okay? So really quickly, I'm just gonna show you. So if I take the mid channel and I turn it all the way down, this is everything that's coming out of the center. Now, if I go to the sides, this is just everything that's panned left and right, okay? So there's not gonna be a lot, you really don't need bass. As you can see, I've notched it all out um, in the sides, but here's what it sounds like with just the sides turned on. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna come back to the mid and I'm just gonna bring it in slowly. Uh, and at the point where it's at zero, that's where it really should be. So you'll hear how much difference it is as I bring this in. Right? So. Now let me just turn it off. I'm gonna not loop it. And um, anyway, here we go. I'm gonna turn this off and on so you can hear the difference. Run away from something fast as you can. Take a look around you, see it. Do you hear how much more spread out those vocals get when I turn this on? I'll turn it off. Speaking about the nonsense where you stand nothing to lose. I don't need more of your advice I can't find my way to paradise I just wanted you to know Huge difference there. Now, of course, there is a little bit of a volume bump because I'm pushing the EQ up quite a bit there. Um, however, this is one of those things that I knew I couldn't do in GarageBand, but I did know that you could do in Logic. So it was one of those big selling points to me as a producer and engineer. Again, I have had to put out, not, I wouldn't say had to, but I really had to work GarageBand to the point where it was like, okay, as a creator, I'm feeling limited by the application itself. I wasn't really in the mood to go around and buy like a bunch of third-party plugins and find out which one was good. I knew that I could just get logic and it would just work, right? There's a ton of tutorials that I'm now watching just like you guys. But anyway, this is one of the features that I was really, really after as an engineer and as a producer. Um, being able to do mid and side EQ and compression, hugely important if you're trying to get that big wide stereo sound that doesn't destroy your mix when you push the mono button if you have the ability to listen in mono. Like sometimes, you know, in the old days when I was trying to figure that out, I'd spread these mixes out super wide and then I'd listen to it in mono and everything would disappear and I would realize, wow, I'm doing something fundamentally wrong. So this is clearly just a brief overview. This isn't a logic anything. Really, I'm just showing you a few little features and how it's different from GarageBand, but also how similar it is to GarageBand. If you are like me and you have reached the limitations of GarageBand, it might be time to move over to Logic and start learning that application. Yes, you can get it. And yes, you will be able to record pretty much right out of the gate, just like you did in GarageBand. And you'll really feel the differences when you get to the mixing stage. But even then, it's not that complicated. There are just more buttons and features and more things to play with. But if you are just looking for that one, like me, just this one little extra thing, uh, that's what I was working on first, you know? Now I can work more with like subgroups and all the other features here. Uh, there's so many very, very nice features in Logic X. However, I am still mixing songs in GarageBand. And I wanna briefly touch on this. I went back to GarageBand yesterday for the first time in a few days after spending a bunch of time on Logic on this song. Uh, went back to mix a song for a client. Don't forget, I do mix songs on GarageBand and now Logic for anybody out there who's curious, check out the website garagebandandbeyond.com. I went back to GarageBand and I gotta say, it felt awesome. It was like going home and it was so easy and I wasn't like staring at all this new stuff, you know, like stuff that still have question marks in, in, in my head for these things. Um, it was just super easy and super nice. And what I was able to do inside of GarageBand totally 
awesome and I was happy with it and the client was super happy with it and we're all good. So don't feel like GarageBand is not good enough because it is absolutely positively good enough. However, if you are looking for specific things that it does not do and you need it to do or you want it to do, it might be time to move up to Logic. So I'm going to continue to make GarageBand videos. Don't worry about that. But I am going to start peppering in Logic videos for you guys, maybe to get you inspired to upgrade um, or just to show you what I'm working on in general. Uh, yes, to the patrons on the Patreon page, Monday Music Songs are going to be created on Logic now. So when you watch those, I'm going to do my best. Uh, when you watch the mix breakdowns, when I make those again, I will make them again. Um, you're going to watch Logic Projects, but I'm going to do my very, very best to make sure that it's everything that you can still do in GarageBand. I, I will really desperately try not to do too many things that GarageBand can't do because I don't want to do that to you guys. Uh, anyway, that's it. I hope you got something out of this little chatty chat chat video, but uh, I'm super excited about getting Logic and it's already becoming um, great for me. The workflow is a little bit faster for me and uh, I'm getting the sound that I finally want out of my track. So that's awesome. Anyway, hope that helps some of you guys. All right. <laughs> Have a great day, you guys. I'll talk to you later. Peace and love.